Hey y'all, in this beginning tutorial, we are going to get our system set up so we can start using Kubernetes. In order to do this, we're gonna sign up for Google Cloud's um, kind of like free tier program. They're offering $300 worth of credits right now, so you can sign up and get that for free to be able to use the platform. By doing this, we're also gonna make sure that we have Python installed. The latest version are between 3.8 and 3.12, and we're gonna make sure that we have have the Google Cloud SDK and command line installed and uh, downloaded and installed. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into those steps. This tutorial is specifically for those who have a Mac. So we're using the Mac OS. Um, I'm using a Mac OS with the M1 chip. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. But at the same time, if you're using um, an older version of Mac, you can also follow along as well because there's an option there. If you're using Windows, this may not be for you. So we're here checking the official Python website and documentation to make sure that we know what is the latest version of Python. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my terminal and see if I have Python installed at all and if so what version at the same time I'm downloading the latest version of Python just in case I don't have the latest version so we're gonna see how it works um, and then we're gonna just walk through it that way so here when you're in the Python website make sure you take some time to look through the documentation if you're not familiar with Python if you are familiar then you already know this process but this particular tutor tutorial is for beginners those who are just now starting to learn about cloud native just starting to learn about kubernetes and want to um, be able to get hands-on so first we have to set up our system in order to do that. Okay, so like if you run into issues trying to figure out where is Python on your system after you downloaded it, uh, don't be surprised, I had the same issue. So I found out that Mac no longer supports Python natively on their system, so it's not automatically installed and already on your device when you get your computer. So you have to install Python now again. So that's why you don't see the ZSH command inside of your terminal. So if you go back to your terminal, what you can do to fix this problem in order for you to be able to use Python is one, you have to make sure you have something called Homebrew already installed on your terminal. Google this, it will take you to GitHub or take you directly to the Homebrew documentation. It's an easy download to install Homebrew because you need this for everything that you're gonna do when you're working in the cloud native space. So that's a separate thing outside of this particular tutorial. Make sure that you get it. Okay, so in order to fix this problem, what we need to do is go to the terminal. You can check and see if you have Python. I typed in Python dash dash version, or you can just do Python dash capital V. It's gonna give you whatever version of Python you have if you have it. If okay, what we need to do now is that we need to add the, S the ZSH command. Uh, so Python is able to use it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do echo, and then we're gonna write the following command. We're gonna write alias Python equals, and we're looking for the path that is in. In um, my case, I'm gonna be using the user bin Python 3, because I have it in that home path that I have. So you can pretty much copy the command exactly as I have <laughs> typing it here. Just pause it as you go through it, copy it and push it through because nine times out of 10, you downloaded Python to your home directory as well. So it's gonna pick it up regardless anyway. And what this is doing is that it's just configuring the ZSH profile for you so that it runs out of that path user bin Python 3 because we're using some form, some version of Python 3. Now, if you still run into an issue, you can always use the command Python equals the money symbol. And this money symbol should equal the path Python is actually installed on. Now, hopefully you won't have the issue if you're following through with the tutorial, but let's go ahead and move on. Now what we need to do, we need to restart our terminal. So we're gonna go ahead and type exit, exit out of the terminal and then Okay, so now we're gonna open up that new terminal and we're gonna check and see what version of Python we have and if it's recognizing that Python is actually installed. So we're gonna type in the Python-V or Python-Version, whatever you wanna do, and it should tell you what version you have. Okay, we see we have version 3.9.6 running. You might have a newer version of Python running. I'm perfectly fine with that because in the Google documentation, it can take anywhere from 3.8 to 3.12 when we're downloading the Google Cloud SDK and command line. Okay, so at this point, you have your Google Cloud account set up, ready to go. You put in your credit card information, you set it up to get 300 free 
uh, dollars worth of credit. You set up your Python. Now we need to go ahead and download and install our command line for the Google SDK and the Google SDK, of course. So let's go ahead and go to our terminal and we are going to also go to the Google documentation for downloading the SDK on the Mac OS. And then we're gonna look at the instructions to make sure we're getting the right package to download. Once we get that correct package, we know we're downloading the SDK for the Mac OS with the M1 chip we're going to go ahead and go through that process. And when you go through that process, if you're running an older version of uh, Python, it will automatically upgrade you to a newer version of Python. And I'm gonna take you through those steps now so that you can see it for yourself. Okay, so you can download the command line directly from the Google Cloud documentation site. You click on the link for the tar file, you download it, and then you open it to extract it or you can do it directly through the command line. We're gonna go ahead and just download it directly to the uh, laptop uh, and then go ahead and once it's downloaded, open it to it, extract it, and then we're gonna go back over to the terminal and run the initial script to make sure that it was properly installed. So we need to be able to access where the file is installed at because if we just put in the script, that's there, which is the Google Cloud SDK installed at SH, it's not gonna give us anything, it can't find the path. So what we need to do is then we need to go ahead and access the downloads drive where that, the, that particular file downloaded. So we access that by doing CD downloads to give us access to the files on our uh, computer that are within the downloads uh, folder. And so we are in the downloads folder and when we're in the downloads folder, now we can run that script. So we can just copy it directly from the documentation site, plug it right in and then run it. Okay, so when it runs, it's asking us, you know, are we sure we wanna make sure it's in this directory? Of course, we're sure we know we want it in there. So let's go ahead and make sure it's there. You extract it, you open it, and then you run the command once you're inside of the downloads folder. Okay, the command runs is successful. It's saying, oh, welcome, welcome. And then it's asking you, um, do you want to help improve Google Cloud by letting us have access to your data? I said, no, that's up to you, yes or no. Type in the letter that you want and then keep moving forward. Then it's gonna download the packages that are relevant to the command line. Here is giving you a, a, a bigger look at what's there. Remember, this is for the command line um, specifically, so it's not gonna download things that are related to Kubernetes like Minikube and other things like that. At this time, we can go back and do that later. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. It's asking us, do we want to have our scripts auto-completed? And I'm gonna say yes. So I'm just gonna say yes to that. You can say no, it's your choice. It's not gonna make a big difference on the download. So I'm just gonna select yes and move forward. Now we're going to have to get to a point where we initialize the uh, the command line uh, download that we did in installation in order for us to initialize it we need to scroll down the documentations page and go to the last script that's under the letter C and that's the Google Cloud SDK bin G Cloud init when it asks us to put that information in we're going to just go ahead and plug it in and then we're going to move forward with the install. Okay, so it's gonna say we need to upgrade or we like to upgrade your Python. Will you, do you want that? Yes, and you hit the Y button for a yes in order to do that so that it can update the Python in order to match the requirements for the Google command line slash SDK. It will prompt you to enter your password for your device go ahead and enter so the download can happen because you have to have admin rights on your device to be able to do this. If you're using a your work computer, you don't have admin rights, then you need to find out how you're able to do this. The admin at your company may do it for you, or if you're a student, um, your tech department will probably do it for you. But if this is your own local device, you should have admin rights to be able to just put in your password that you use to log into your computer to complete the, uh, the download for the Google uh, command line. And if you're brand new to tech, SDK is Software Development Kit, CLI is Command Line. All right, so the script is running for us. It's updating Python to make sure we have the best version to work with. 
So now we're to the point where we're able to initialize the CLI SDK download. And what we need to do is go back to the documentation, find the script for the uh, CLI initialization, copy it directly from the documents. It is under the C to initialize the G Cloud CLI, run the G Cloud init command. We are going to copy that, paste that in, and go ahead and run that command so that our download could be fully completed. And so after that, it should give you uh, a note to log directly into the Google Cloud platform. So when it tells you that you need to go ahead and log into the Google Cloud platform with the account that you created in order to receive those $300 in um, credits to use Google Cloud. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. As I create more and more hands-on tutorials, you'll have access to this so that you can learn Kubernetes the same way I did, the same one every, everyone else does together. When the prompt comes up to allow you to approve the STK, uh, the Google SDK, go ahead and approve it. You'll get a message saying, congratulations. You completed it successfully. The authentication is good. You are who you say you are. Congratulations, you can use Google Cloud Platform. Once that initialization occurs, we are able to go ahead and complete the install by uh, deciding if we're gonna select yes or no to the uh, to the log. I just went ahead and put yes, why not? Let's keep it moving. And now we can continue on and start setting up Kubernetes so we can start using that as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope that you guys found this useful. I hope you were able to download successfully and I'll see you in the next video.